Sometimes, the people we love the most, the ones we trust the most, can disappoint us in ways we could never imagine. This is exactly where I find myself now, a marriage I believed was going well all along, and now, everything is falling apart. That day, when my wife came out of the garage and walked into the kitchen, she had no idea that everything was about to change. As for me, I sat there waiting in a silent rage, brought on by the truth that was about to upend my life. What mattered most was what I would do after this betrayal. Before I dive into my story, if you don't want your life to be turned upside down like mine, subscribe to my channel to learn real lessons from the real stories we share every day, just like mine. Also, share your thoughts about the shocking truths I've experienced in the comments, and please show your support by liking my video. Now that you've subscribed, let's dive into my story. It all started one morning. That day was just an ordinary day, like any other. I was watching my wife, Veronica, get ready for work. I had noticed that she had been acting rushed, irritable, and a bit anxious in the mornings for days. At first, I didn't pay much attention to it, maybe she was having issues at work, or something else was going on. But I had this feeling inside, a sense of unease that I couldn't quite explain, small signs, overlooked details. Over time, I began to notice that there was a change in Veronica's behavior. She was spending more time on her phone, quickly reading messages and hiding them. And when she saw me, her expression would change, growing tense. One day, while I was home alone, I noticed that Veronica had left her phone on the kitchen table. A sudden urge rose within me, it was as if the truth inside that phone was calling me. The voice inside me whispered, look, it said, you'll find your answer there. But I didn't act immediately. I wanted to trust my wife. My love for her, in that moment, suppressed my doubts. As days passed, this unease started to grow. She always kept her phone with her, and sometimes she would tell me she had to work late. Everything seemed reasonable, yet that voice inside me was growing stronger. She had started mentioning a man named Greg, someone she worked with. At first, it seemed like just a work relationship, but as Veronica talked about Greg more frequently, I began to feel uneasy about this man's presence in our lives. Still, I wanted to trust myself, and I wanted to trust my wife. But once doubt creeps in, it's impossible to stop it. Eventually, the moment came. One day, when Veronica went out for what she called a work dinner, she had forgotten her phone at home again. At that moment, I knew everything would become clear. I picked up the phone, my hands trembling. When I opened her messages, I found her conversations with Greg. My heart felt like it was about to leap out of my chest. The messages revealed not just a work relationship, but something much deeper. The words on the screen confirmed that she was cheating on me. Greg's messages to her, the times they met, their intimate moments, everything was there. I was in shock, but at the same time, there was a strange sense of relief. The uncertainty and doubt that had been eating away at me for months were now confirmed. But that relief was soon replaced by a deep anger. Veronica had chosen to share her life with me, yet now she was living a life with another man. In that moment, I made a decision, I wouldn't confront her right away about this betrayal. I would wait for everything to come to light. I would wait for the right moment, the moment that would force her to face her infidelity. For days, I carried this secret. Every night as she lay beside me, knowing she had betrayed me, this feeling grew inside me. But I was determined to keep my cool. It would be easy to accuse her, to demand answers, but I wanted to show her the full extent of her betrayal. I watched her every move, the late nights at work, the hidden messages on her phone. Everything was like a puzzle, and the pieces were falling into place. My doubts had solidified into certainty, but I decided to wait. I waited for everything to unfold perfectly. When the moment of confrontation came, I had to be fully prepared. Finally, the moment arrived. One day, when Veronica went out again for one of her so-called work meetings, I prepared the scene for our confrontation, a small table, a few objects. The stage was set. My wife was about to step onto the stage of our life. When she walked in, she had no idea that everything was about to change, and she had no idea that I was so prepared. And then, it happened. 
When she walked in, I was sitting in the kitchen. It was time to confront her. I had moved a small table and placed a few objects on top of it. The stage was set. This wasn't a game, but I was about to put on a performance. When she walked in from the garage and saw me, she hesitated. She was trying to figure out if something was wrong. Thomas, what are you doing? Is something wrong, she asked, her voice slightly trembling. I shook my head slightly. No, nothing. I just need you to help me with something, I said. Help you with what? What are you talking about, she asked, her curiosity growing. I picked up a small object from the table and held it up towards her. This, I said proudly, is a manhood cage. Cocked husbands wear it. Her eyes widened so much they looked like snail eyes on stalks. She didn't know what to say. You, what are you doing? Is this a joke, Thomas, her voice was trembling, but she knew I was serious. It's not a joke, I said calmly. I did some research. Husbands like me wear this cage. You'll carry the key around your neck, and after your bull finishes with you, you'll let me out, if you feel like it. She looked at me with eyes that didn't know what to say. Bull? What are you talking about? The rising pitch in her voice was now giving way to anger, but I didn't back down. The bull, the man you're with, Greg, your lover. While you're with him, I watch, and then, if I get a turn, I clean up. At that moment, time seemed to stop. The look on her face was a mix of guilt and denial. Are you implying I'm having an affair with Greg? She shouted. But I stayed calm and answered, I'm not implying anything. I know. But I'm not blaming you. I'm just trying to understand my role. She took a step forward, grabbed the cage out of my hand, and threw it into the laundry room. Stop this, she shouted, but I only looked at the cage with a pained expression. If you didn't like the cage, why didn't you say so earlier? We could have tried a different model, I said sarcastically. Finally, I confronted her with the truth. Do you wonder when it first happened? I asked. She swallowed, waiting. February 11th, 7.44 p.m. Today is March 15th, and it's now 5.40 p.m. I can tell you the exact minute if you'd like. Her mouth hung open, and she couldn't say a word. Why didn't you say anything, she asked finally. What difference would it have made? I replied coldly. You expected me to argue, to say, Veronica, why did you cheat on me? Do I need to know why? No, I don't. Because I already know the reason, you're a sociopath. Those words seemed to break the last of her resistance. Tears began to stream down her face, but they meant nothing to me. How could you say that? I'm your wife. I thought you loved me, she said. This isn't about love, I replied. I used to love you, but now I only feel pain. The moment I found out you cheated, the love was gone. Veronica stood there with an empty expression on her face. So, what happens now, she whispered, almost inaudibly. I looked at her. We're getting a divorce, Veronica. The time has come. I could see from the fear on her face that she couldn't accept it. No, no. I don't want a divorce. My relationship with Greg is over. I swear I'll dedicate the rest of my life to you. I'll be the best wife to you, Thomas, please, she begged. Her words stirred nothing in me. It's too late, I said. There's no turning back now. From the moment I learned of your betrayal, everything was over. At that moment, I felt Veronica trying to hold on to me one last time. She pressed her body against me, her eyes filled with fear and desperation. But it was too late to piece together the broken parts inside me. Love had been replaced with emptiness. In the following days, I watched as Veronica tried everything to win me back. She cooked meals, tried to get my attention at home, but the emptiness inside me made her every action meaningless. The day she opened the door and saw the towering man standing there, the look of horror on her face is something I'll never forget. 
Veronica Brown, these papers are for you, the man said coldly. As Veronica looked at the papers in her hands, I simply stood there expressionless. These papers were the real consequence of her betrayal as the divorce papers were handed to her, she collapsed to her knees and began to cry. She was lying on the ground, crying helplessly, but nothing was going to change now. There was no turning back. The day I learned of her betrayal, all the love I had for her had disappeared. That night, I remember giving her one last chance, but that chance didn't erase the past. Her tears didn't make up for what she had done. We had already played the final scene of our life together. There was nothing left to do but watch the divorce process unfold. Veronica had done everything she could, but her betrayal had irreversibly changed everything. On that day, when I sat in the kitchen and showed her that manhood cage, I already knew everything was over.